Decline in soil quality costs Africa's agricultural sector hundreds of billions of dollars annually. Soil erosion, decline in carbon content, decreasing fertility, loss of soil biodiversity, and acidification. These are some key hurdles to sustainable intensification of agriculture in the continent. So, soil needs to be managed well, managed systematically. And to do that, good soil data is very important. A fair amount of African soil data does exist, but the data sets are difficult to combine and compare with each other as they have been collected using different methodologies and are in different kinds of formats. The metadata is often not well documented, so the methods used to collect them cannot be traced. A lot of that data was collected before GPS technology was widely available. So the geo-referencing behind that data can be inaccurate. Besides, there is a lot of data that is not digitized and cannot be utilized fully. The Africa Soil Information Service Project, or AFSIS, was undertaken to improve this situation. The project compiled existing soil data from 300 sources and 18,000 locations across Africa and harmonized it all into one common digital format. Additionally, primary data was collected from 9,000 locations. All of this was combined to create data sets of 250 meter resolution, which formed the basis of Pan-Africa soil maps. These maps can be accessed through an information system called soil grids. AFSIS and soil grids were a great improvement upon what we had before. But a big part of the data underlying them is still legacy data, collected using different non-standard methods. So, soil data-wise, we are not quite there yet. That is the takeoff point for Soils for Africa, which is working towards a continental-scale soil information system based on primary data collected from 20,000 locations across Africa. The methodologies of selecting sampling sites, of collecting soil samples, and of analyzing the samples in the laboratory will be based on LUCAS, the Land and Soil Monitoring System of the European Union. These methodologies will be adapted and standardized for Africa. They will be documented and offered as part of the soil information system. The idea here is that standard methodologies can then be followed and repeated. And this baseline of data from 20,000 locations can continue to grow and increase in resolution. So with time, the soil information system can be used to monitor soil quality at the sub-regional, national and local levels. To ensure that the soil information system continues to grow in the future, it will become part of FNSSA's knowledge and information system and will be hosted by an African Knowledge Institute. As of now, June 2021, the four-year project is about to enter its second year. A key output of year one was a map of agricultural land in Africa. Based on Lucas's land use maps, it shows the location of land used for different agricultural land uses such as cropping, grazing and agroforestry. The map will help select the locations for soil sampling. It will help make sure that the samples represent lands under different kinds of agricultural use. We have also identified the key users of soil data in Africa and their specific data needs. This includes policymakers, government organizations, NGOs, researchers, farmer organizations, extension workers, and agribusinesses like fertilizer manufacturers. So, the SIS will provide information about a range of key soil properties like soil texture, organic carbon content, phosphorus content, total nitrogen content, and extractable potassium content. All the topsoil across samples will be analyzed for heavy metals. 300 select samples will be analyzed for pesticide residues. We are now finalizing the project's methodology for data collection and analysis. In year 2, we will kickstart the fieldwork.